here is my process. I've chosen the behaviors I want to change this year using a somewhat simple process, which is based loosely on the science of setting a successful goal. Hi everyone, happy new year. I am so grateful that we are out the other side of 2020. This morning I decided to set my new year's goals. Well, I actually don't set new year's goals. I set new year's actions instead. And this is something that I find really useful for getting me through the year and getting me closer to, you know, long life goals that I have. So I thought in this video, I'd show you how I set these actions and so what my process actually is. I'm a big believer in you can set goals at any time in the year. It does not have to be at new year, but I find personally that with new year, I have a lot more motivation and my motivation is not always there when I need it to be. So when I am motivated, I always try and act and do the things that I actually want to do and really like ride the motivation wave. Goals are outcomes which require intervention to be reached. And it's unlikely for a goal to be achieved with your current state of behavior or being. So in order to achieve a goal, we have to focus on changing certain behaviors to make this happen. When we actively change our behaviors, we are making new habits. And habits are our default behaviors to certain situations, and they save our brains having to consciously decide what to do when faced with familiar problems. So for example, I have a habit of having to eat a biscuit when I make a cup of tea. It's automatic for me to reach for a biscuit tin when I'm brewing my cup of tea. And this is because in my brain, I've strongly linked tea with biscuits. So in order for me to break this habit, I have to change my default behavior to be something else, which if any of you love tea and biscuits, you'll know how much easier that is said than done. How habits are formed in the brain is through our past experience and repetition. So when you're faced with a novel situation, you can think of your brain as like a meadow with really tall grass and no set way to navigate you through it. You have to aimlessly walk through the field to solve the problem in front of you. And this will leave a faint path behind you. And when you're faced with that problem again, you can choose to take the same route through the meadow as you did on your first encounter if you found this to be successful. And then over time, this path will become more and more structured the more you use it. And hence it becomes the default route you take when faced with a certain situation. Now with our goals, what we often have to do is start to form a new path through the meadow to change our default behavior. So we don't wanna go down that structured default path we wanna create a new one. And so this is trying to change the default behavior we have to a certain situation or a certain stimulus. So for example, if you're wanting to go to the gym in the morning before work, you have to change your default behavior from the 6 a.m. alarm you have, meaning roll over and go back to sleep, to the 6 a.m. alarm, meaning wake up and work out. That is a very different path through the meadow. So safe to say changing this default behavior requires effort and commitment for a prolonged period of time. Researchers have suggested forming new habits can take up to three months as you are physically laying new pathways in your brain. So to strengthen them, you have to repeatedly use them in response to a stimulus, which takes a fair bit of time. This all sounds okay when we speak about it, like I can get up at 6 a.m. and work out, no problem. But that is the issue we have when setting goals. We think of rewards and not the effort that's required to be put in. Whereas when it actually comes to following through with past promises we've made ourselves, our brains then focus on the immediate effort required. And this leads many of us to give up as the effort far outweighs the reward in the moment that we're doing it. A study published this year showed this to be the case. People chose high reward options when selecting a goal, but when it came to performing this option, they would go for the low effort choice instead. And this suggested that when we're setting goals, we really need to consider the effort which will be required for you to get there. And also remembering that long-term reward in the moment when you are having to perform these effort intensive actions. So here is my process. I've chosen the behaviors I want to change this year using a somewhat simple process which is based loosely on the science of setting a successful goal. The first thing that I did to get everything out my head was to write a list of all the things that I would love to achieve in the next year. And I did this, let me grab my little book. So I got some nice tunes going, a cup of tea, candle on, 
and I really reflected on what I wanted. And this is a page that I call my wants, my wants for 2021. And I split this into sections really because I think I have goals across multiple parts of my life. So I have my career, health goals, financial goals and family goals. And I write a prose of in the next year, I want to be successful in my career. I want to be able to spend quality time with my family, all of these things. And I just write as many things as I want down on that page. Once I have this list, I then select my top few wants. And I think how many goals you have in a year really depends on how novel these goals are to you. So for me, for example, I want to really get back into my fitness at the gym. The past few months with everything that's going on has been really, really difficult to do that. And in the past, I was going to the gym four or five times a week. So I know that I am able to commit to going to the gym multiple times a week because I've done it in the past. If I'd never been to the gym before and then my goal was to go to the gym three or four times a week, I would really have that as a sole goal without many other things because to really change your behavior around that goal is going to take a lot of effort and focus. So you really have to prioritize. So if your goal is very new and the behaviors you're having to perform are very new, then you have to prioritize and pick that goal and put it above other things. But if you're just trying to pick up behaviors you've already done in the past, they'll be in here somewhere so you can then have a few more goals if you wish. So then what I do is make this list of wants into actionable steps. And this is on a page I call 2021, the specifics. So I take each of my wants and make them specific and challenging to my current self. According to science, there are more efficient ways of setting goals to make them successful. And this comes from goal setting theory, which was proposed from analyzing thousands of studies on goals and behavioral change. And what this suggests is that goals should be conscious and specific and difficult but achievable. So I take my list and rewrite each goal in very specific terms. So instead of, I want to get stronger this year, I change that vague goal into, I want to be able to do an unassisted pull up. This is a clear instruction, which I can tell by 2022 if I've achieved it or not. Plus I can't do a pull up now. So to me, this is difficult, but with hard work, I think it is achievable. So it definitely fits the goal setting theory criteria. And I've done this for every item on my list. Now for each goal, I wrote about how I was going to be able to achieve each one and the challenges I anticipate that I'm gonna face. So for example, if we go back to my goal of trying to do a pull up, I know this is gonna take hours of training in the gym to get strong enough to hold my body up with just my arms. So I wrote about how many times a week I will need to train, when I will train, how I will track my progress. I use an app on my phone which logs all my reps at the gym. And I also know for me to fit in training, I am gonna have to get up early, which can be challenging when I'm tired. So I wrote a contingency for being tired. So for example, get my clothes ready the night before, be in bed by 10 o'clock. And this way of planning the how of getting to a goal and noticing potential problems is preparing yourself for the reality of performing the actions needed to get you to your goal. So like I mentioned before, it brings the effort required into the planning process when you're thinking of the reward you're going to get. So this is a page that I call 2021, how to achieve and challenges. This does look like a a lot of writing, but writing goals down has been reported to enhance the likelihood of achieving them. This number is written all over the internet that if you write your goal down, it increases your success of achieving it by 42%. But I could not find the original study for this anywhere, which is a bit concerning considering it is everywhere. So I don't know how correct that is because I actually couldn't assess the science. But a study published this year did show how impactful the quality and effort you put into writing about your goals and strategies to reach them is. So individuals who wrote in detail about their goals had improved academic performance in this study, irrespective of whether the goal was academic or not. This suggests that the act of writing goals down, even if they're unrelated to other areas of life, can enhance overall performance. Some people also suggest that changing the tense of your goal writing from the future I want to the present I am can impact performance. So again, that would be instead of I want to do an unassisted pull up, it would be I can do an unassisted pull up. I couldn't find 
any studies on how writing in the present tense impacts goal setting, but I would really love to see research on this before promoting it. So personally, I would speak from my point of view. I tend to write my goals list in the future tense. And when I have my final goals, I write them in the present tense, just to give you the sense that I'm already the person who is capable of achieving such actions. Now, this next step is really where I've changed how I set goals for this year. This is where I change from goal setting to action setting. I'm actually taking my eye off the prize in 2021. Yep, yeah, I'm gonna forget my goals and instead focus on the actions I need to get to them. With goals, you can either focus on outcomes, like I want to run a marathon, or on behaviours. So that would be, I want to run four times a week. Recent research has shown there isn't a significant benefit to focusing on either outcomes or behaviours. But for me, focusing on outcomes can be very overwhelming as I'm constantly checking if I'm there yet, like have I achieved the goal? So this year I'm making sure all my goals are based on things that I can control which is my behavior. So once I have my detailed descriptions of how I can get to each goal and the challenges I think I'm gonna face, I turn these into action lists. So let's go back to my pull-up example. I know I'm gonna to have to go to the gym a lot to make that happen. So I take my goal and change it from, I want to do a pull-up to, I go to the gym four times a week. This gives me an action that requires my commitment to make it happen. So for each of my goals, I come up with one or more actions I can do within a week. So yeah, make a list of the actions. So I have that also in my book. I call it my 2021 action points. And this should just make it a bit more manageable to actually achieve the goals that you have and not get overwhelmed with the big stuff. So actions do speak louder than words, but beliefs drive your actions and your self-identity is thought to play a huge role in making you stick to these actions. Numerous studies have shown correlations between habitual behaviours like donating blood frequently and identity. So someone would describe themselves as being a blood donor. It's still unclear whether the behaviours you do impact your self-identity or if your self-identity drives your behaviours, it's probably a mixture of the two. So telling yourself you are the person who does the actions you need to do to help you reach your goal can potentially help you. In the book, Atomic Habits would highly recommend. Identity comes as the core of behavioural change and preliminary studies suggest that linking habits to the feeling of self-identity can increase self-esteem and motivation towards becoming your ideal self. So with my list of actions, I like to think of the person I need to be to carry them out. So sometimes I look to real life examples like Mo Farah when it comes to me sticking to my running schedule. Like Mo Farah would not complain about running 5k in the cold, he would just do it. And other times I just describe the characteristics that I would have when I achieve those goals. For this I've drawn a little diagram of a person as you can see with all these little quotes around her to describe the person I would be. So for example one is I am a morning person who is always punctual and that's definitely an identity I've proven myself to have in the past but that's waned a bit over Christmas. So your identity should help you perform your desired actions which should help you strengthen your identity. So it's a lovely cycle of enhancing behavioural change. Finally and crucially we make an action plan. It's all about scheduling and assessment for me. With action-based goals I like a way to check in of how effective they actually are being. So for each goal I have I break it down into roughly four milestones. I can mark my progress against every three months to see how I'm getting on. So again, let's take my pull-up goal. My first three month check-in is to be able to pull down 40 kilograms for five reps, so like this. And that for me now is just out of reach. With commitment, I should get there. So I know if after three months I've reached that, I'm on track for my pull-up goal at the end of 2021. So break all of your big goals into three month milestones, and then again, forget them and focus on the actions. You could do this for every month, but really it is up to you. The results on feedback related to achieving goals in a recent study showed little to no impact on outcomes. Personally, I feel feedback can either motivate you or really put you off if you feel like you haven't 
got as far as you wanted to. So think about how you respond to feedback and then set your milestones accordingly. And now my favorite thing to do is schedule. For me, a schedule is the counter attack for lack of motivation. Most of the time with big goals, motivation does dwindle after some action, potentially because your brain is focusing on the effort required with very little immediate reward. Most of our goals have long-term outcomes. So when your brain weighs up the cost of doing an action versus the reward, it tells you, don't do it, there is no point. But I find if I schedule my wants in advance with that future self in mind, I find it much easier to follow through. Instead of questioning the action, I just say, follow my schedule. It's much, much easier. So I make an ideal week on my online calendar, filling in all my commitments with my action goals around them. And then this is a case of trial and error. Once you give that week a go, tweak it and update and also be realistic. Give yourself breaks and downtime. And this may mean to fit in all of your goals. You have to spread them over a two week schedule or a monthly schedule. This is fine too, but really think about the effort again. Is this schedule that you've set realistic? I have a whole video on how I make schedules. I will link it here. So check that out if you want to make a schedule with your new action goals in there. So that is it. That is how I'm setting goals this year. I'm focusing on the behaviors I need to commit to in order to reach the outcome with check-ins at regular intervals. By committing to behaviors consistently, I will be building new habits in my brain. The key to remember is it's hard to make new behaviors and sticking with it for those first few months is crucial to achieving your goals. I got this gorgeous diary, I will link below for Christmas, which I'm going to use to track my efforts. Also, if you're feeling brave, it has been reported setting goals publicly boosts performance but maybe I'll wait until next year for that one. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions for me, comment below or catch me on social media. And also thank you so much for all your support this year. It means the world to me. You are all amazing. I'll see you next time. Bye.